Hello friends, welcome to the channel Solution. Today, in this video, we will tell you about the different glasswares and apparatus which are commonly used in the laboratory. This video is the part 3 of glassware and apparatus and link of the part 1 and the part 2 is given in the description box of this video. This glassware is called Thill's tube which is named after the Johannes Thill and this is used to determine the melting point of any substance. As you can see here, this is like test tube or you can say boiling tube with attached V-shaped handle or you can say this is V-tube. And this Thill's tube is made up of borosilicate glass. So for determining the melting point of any substance, first this Thill's tube is filled with an oil like liquid paraffin to the upper level of the V tube. And then the substance is placed in the capillary tube which is sealed from one end. And then this capillary tube containing the sample is tied with the thermometer. And then this setup is dipped in the Thill's tube inside the paraffin. And then this V-shaped handle of Thill's tube is heated using heating source like open flame. And through the convection current, heat is uniformly distributed throughout the oil in the tube. And during heating, the point means the temperature at which the melting is observed. Then that temperature is the melting point of that substance. And this is how we can determine the melting point of any substance by using this Thill's tube. Next, this is called Nestle cylinder with a fixed volume and this is made up of glass. And this is the two volume marking. Here you can see this is for 25 ml and this is for 50 ml. And here it is written this is made up of borosilicate glass. And this is the stand of this Nestle cylinder. We can attach this stand to the Nestle cylinder like this to keep the Nestle cylinder in the standing position at the time of the experiment. This Nestle cylinder is used for different colorimetric analysis means this Nestle cylinder is used as a reaction vessel for the comparison of the color and the turbidity between the solution. So this Nestle cylinder is called color comparison cylinder because it is used to compare the color or, or the turbidity of the sample with the color or turbidity of the standard solution. So this Nestle cylinder is used in different experiment like in limit test, limit test of heavy metals, limit test of impurities. Next this is called glass cuvette. And here you can see this is like a small test tube with a flat bottom and it is a colorimeter glass cuvette in which we fill the sample for the spectroscopic measurement. And this is the white line marking. According to this white line marking, we have to place and set the cuvette inside the sample holder of the colorimeter mark. When we fill the sample for the analysis inside this glass cuvette and then when we place this cuvette inside the spectrophotometer, the beam of the light pass through the sample within this cuvette to measure the absorbance, transmittance, fluorescence for the analysis. Means this cuvette is used for placing the sample inside it, the sample which is used for the analysis. And because this is colorimeter glass cuvette, this is used only for the analysis of the sample in visible range. This is called sintered glass funnel filter. Here you can see this is sintered glass plate or you can say sintered glass disc and here is the opening through which filtered liquid means filtrate comes out from the funnel and here you can see the shape is like funnel and this is made up of borosilicate glass of 35 ml capacity. This sintered glass filter is of G4 grade means different grade of centered glass filters are available in the market and grading is according to the pore size of the disc. And this is of G4 grade means pore size is range from 5 to 15 micron. Centered glass disc is made by sintering together the glass particle into the porous solid and through this centered disc means finely porous glass gas or liquid may pass. And this is also called fritted glass filter which is used to filter liquid or gases means to filter out very fine solid particles or precipitate or residue from a fluid. And due to very small pore size, this is also used to prepare sterile solution. Means it is used to filter out, means to remove the fungus, bacteria or other contaminants to make the solution sterile. 
Next, this is called glass spirit lamp, which is used for different heating purpose when open flame is required. And this is glass cover of this spirit lamp, and this is called wick, and this is the metal screw which support the wick. In the lower side, you can see in the vessel we fill the spirit. and the other end of the wick is completely dipped inside the spirit so that by the capillary action spirit move upward to the top means to the other end of the wick and with the help of match stick or lighter we can lighten the lamp like this this spirit lamp is also available in brass or stainless steel material this spirit lamp is used in many laboratories mostly in the chemistry and microbiology lab for many types of heating purpose like heating or boiling of liquid combustion or you can say burning of any substance or this is used in the microbiology lab for flame heating sterilization of certain lab equipments like inoculating loop means for sterilizing the inoculating loop in direct flame inside the laminar hood at the time of inoculation means the transfer of the cell cell means plant animal cell or microbial cell into the culture medium and other example like when we have to seal the one end of the capillary so that we can fill any substance inside it at the time of experiment experiment like at the time of melting point determination or when we have to make pointed narrow tip of the capillary tube to transfer very small amount of the sample means at the time of spotting when we have to transfer small amount of the sample at the thin layer chromatography the paper chromatography and other type of the heating purpose it is used and with the help of this glass cover of the spirit lamp we can extinguish the flame next this is called capillary tube and here it is written that this is micro capillary tube of 75 mm length and it is made up of borosilicate glass with both end open and this is very thin tube made up of glass and here you can see both the end of this capillary tube this is the one end and this is the other end of the capillary tube and both the end is open and this capillary tube is used to collect the liquid sample the liquid sample flows up into the capillary tube by the capillary action this capillary tube is commonly used in the medical and the research field to draw very small sample of the liquid to be analyzed such as blood sample or any other chemical sample different size of the capillary tube is available available in different size different thickness and this capillary tube is used in the chemistry lab for different purpose like spotting the tlc plate spotting means to spot very small amount of the sample and the standard solution on the tlc C plate in thin layer chromatographic technique, and for the same purpose, it is used in the paper chromatography to spot very small amount of the sample and the standard solution on the paper. And this capillary tube is also used to fill the sample inside it when one side of the capillary tube is sealed, so that we can determine the melting point of the sample. Next this is called glass spraying bottle which is also called lab reagent sprayer or chromatographic sprayer available with the rubber bulb this is the joint where the head of the sprayer is attached and we can remove this head like this and the lower side of the head you can see this is the glass tube of this head and the lower side of this tube is dipped inside the reagent present in the flask of the sprayer and this is for the attachment to attach the head of the flask of the sprayer bottle and from this point the reagent means the liquid spray out means comes out in the form of very fine droplets at the time of spraying we have to hold like this means we have to hold the head with the thumb at the time of spraying or we have to attach the clip so that the sprayer head do not come out from the main body and then we have to pump means to press the rubber bulb like this and by pumping the liquid flows in the upper direction to the tip of the glass tube of the sprayer head and due to the air pressure the liquid spray into the form of very fine droplet next this glass apparatus is called stalagmometer which is used for the measurement of surface tension of a liquid by drop weight or by drop count method 
and at the middle section here it is a bulb shaped and at the lower and the upper side you can see the marking and this stalagmometer is made up of borosilicate glass and this is narrow tube and this narrow tube consists of capillary and this is the opening of this capillary tube means this is the orifice from which the liquid comes out from the tube in the form of droplets and in this way by the drop count or by the drop weight method we can determine the surface tension of a liquid by comparing the surface tension of any reference liquid means standard liquid such as water we have already uploaded the practical video of how we can determine the surface tension of any liquid by drop count method in our channel both in the english and hindi explanation you can go through the channel and watch the video or the link is also available in the description box of this video next this is called oostwall viscometer and this oostwall viscometer is used for the determination of the viscosity of the liquid with a known density this oostwall viscometer consists of u shaped glass tube and consists of two bulb and at this point we attach the rubber bulb to suck and fill the liquid in the upper bulb from the lower bulb and from this point we can fill the liquid inside the bulb and when we suck the liquid with the help of rubber bulb the liquid flows from the lower bulb to the upper bulb and this is the upper and the lower marking of this blood and when the liquid flows by the gravity the time required for the liquid to pass from the upper mark to the lower mark of the bulb is noted means measuring the time for a known volume of the liquid to flow from the upper mark to the lower mark of the bulb we can determine the viscosity of the liquid by putting this value into the formula and also we have already uploaded the practical video of how we can determine the viscosity of a liquid by oostwall viscometer in our channel both in english and hindi explanation you can go through the channel to watch this video or the link is also available in the description box next this is called specific gravity bottle and with the help of this specific gravity bottle we can determine the specific gravity of any sample specific gravity of any liquid and this is the glass stopper of this bottle which consists of capillary inside it specific gravity is also called relative density relative density means when we determine the density of any liquid by comparing it with the reference substance reference substance like reference liquid like water of which the density is known at particular temperature so when we determine the density by comparing it with the reference substance means density relative to the reference substance then it is called relative density and relative density is also called specific gravity and again we have already uploaded the practical video of how we can determine the relative density of any sample by using specific gravity bottle in our channel both in english and hindi explanation you can go through our channel to watch the video or the link is also available in the description box next this is called pycnometer and it is also used to determine the relative density of any sample and it is also called double band pycnometer and this is the cylindrical shaped bulb with u band with a long narrow tube and this is made up of borosilicate glass and it is of 10 ml capacity so this is all about the some commonly used glasswares and apparatus used in the laboratory thank you very much for watching this video